Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for free premium sports picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now here online, we're trying to beat the casino. We're looking for a clash of styles in the ring that might be misinterpreted by a lot of other gamblers, including the odds maker setting the line. I believe you have that in a fight that's going to take place in August that's going to have repercussions for years. And that's going to be the welterweight championship fight between unbeaten Sean Porter and unbeaten Kel Brook. Now let me say this. Um, when I make a video like this, as you can imagine, when I'm talking about two unbeaten fighters, whatever I say is going to have half the crowd get upset. Right? There are fans out there right now, without knowing what I'm going to say next, who are firmly committed to their unbeaten fighter. Right? That's the way it goes. Just understand it. Somebody is going to have to lose this fight unless it's a curious draw. I believe the underdog in this fight, two to one underdog, Cal Brook, if I had one bet to make, I believe Cal Brook takes Sean Porter's title. I believe Cal Brook puts himself in the mix at 147. I'll even go further. If that happens, understand that opens the door to a lot. Because Floyd Mayweather is not fighting Amir Khan in the fall, right? Amir Khan would have a decision to make. Chase history against Floyd next year or have a civil war in the United Kingdom that would really be almost on par with Carl Frotch versus George Groves against his fellow countryman, Kel Brook. Now let's talk about why I think Sean Porter, who just destroyed Paulie Malignaggi in a fight in which I picked Malignaggi to win the fight, right? Why Sean Porter, who before that beat Devin Alexander in a spirited matchup. Why I feel that Sean Porter, who just got the IBF welterweight title, loses this fight. And what I want people to do is I want people to go back a little bit and look at Sean Porter's fight, the first fight against Julio Diaz. That's the draw in Sean Porter's 24-0-1 record. And what you're going to see in that fight is that Julio Diaz outboxes Porter for stretches of that match. Right? Well, let me say this. If a boxing match breaks out here, I believe Kel Brook wins the boxing match. Right? If no one gets knocked down, if they're just trading punches, in my opinion, and I know it's controversial, you need to go with your eyes, not mine. But in my opinion, Kel Brook hits harder than Sean Porter, and has the faster hands. Right? Cal Brook, simply put, is more offensive than Sean Porter. Right? Let me also point out that unlike Devin Alexander and Paulie Malignaggi, who come at you with, we'll call it a side profile. In fact, let me use my fingers. Right? Just imagine this is the jab, right? And this is the guy, and this is his other hand, right? This is how Malinaji, it's a side profile, right? This is how Malinaji and Devin Alexander come at you. 
I understand Alexander's a southpaw. I understand Malinaji is orthodox. But they come at you and they're popping a jab. Right? They're popping a jab. They're on a side profile. Their other hand, their dominant hand, is back here in the background. Right? So to jump inside like Porter likes to do, he just has to time an entry point off his opponent's jab. Now what if I told you, in my opinion, Kell Brook's a hoverer, and he doesn't come in at a side profile a big portion of the time. He actually comes in, and I know it's unorthodox, but he comes in like this, really like this, a lot of the time. Right? His feet are much more horizontal. Right? They're much more together than the feet of a Devin Alexander or a Pauli Malinaji. Right? Now understand. Kell Brook is much more mobile than Devin Alexander. He hits a lot harder than Pauli Malinaji. He's much more two-handed than Pauli Malinaji. I believe it's harder to duplicate Kell Brook's style because it's unorthodox. Right? He's a hoverer, a little bit different than what I call a mover. A mover someone like Chris Algieri, right? Andre Durrell, right? A guy sticking a jab and moving around the ring. A hoverer is a little bit different. I consider Daniel Gill to be a hoverer, right? Kel Brook to me is a hoverer. These are guys who circle you, who have great legs right who can shift their legs I've seen Kell Brook switch dominant hands in fights right their legs allow them to do things that are unorthodox and not recommended but that give the fight style of a Sean Porter problems in my opinion Right? Because Kell Brook isn't like this, because he's more like this, Kell Brook can hit you with right or left hands quickly. His hand speed is accentuated. You're not even sure what he's going to hit you with. Right? It's not a jab, jab, jab his way in. Rather, it's more a read and react style where he's in front of you, he's reading you, whatever is open, he's going to take. And if you look at Kell Brook, he throws combinations, right? Because the fight style is so unorthodox and because Kell Brook is a master at shifting his weight, I don't think the public understands how hard this guy hits. Let me say, after the Sean Porter destruction of Pauli Malinaji, I'm just here to tell you the view from my seat, which is that Kel Brook will be the puncher in this fight. Right? I think Cal Brook, the 2-1 to one underdog, is mispriced here and has the advantage. I think he can outbox Sean Porter. I would hedge the play with Porter by KO. But let's talk about Sean Porter's style for a moment. Sean Porter to me, and keep in mind, he started his career heavier than he is now. So he loses weight to make weight. You need to know that because he might view the guys he's fighting as naturally smaller than him. But here's the catch with Porter. Let's compare him to a great fighter at his best, Mike Tyson. 
The catch with Porter is Porter comes across as fighting kind of like a Mike Tyson style. But in my opinion, he doesn't have Mike Tyson's power. <coughs> right? So whereas Tyson could leap in, hit you with a shot, and then you saw the opponent's leg stiffen. <coughs> then you saw the opponent either fall down like Trevor Burbeck or hug him to death like Bonecrusher Smith. What I believe will happen here is if Porter is lucky, jumps in and hits Kel Brook like he hit Paulie Malinaji. I think Kel Brook, well first let me say this. I think Kel Brook is younger and fresher than Malinaji. Hitting Kel Brook is much easier said than done. But let's say Porter gets through and gets lucky and lands on Kel Brook. The problem with hitting a mobile guy is there's a chance that if you don't knock the mobile guy out, the mobile guy then gets back on his horse and stays away from that punch. I don't view Porter as a finisher. Curiously enough, I view Kel Brook as a finisher. I think Brook's underrated here. I think the 2-1 to one odds are a gift. I like Kel Brook to win this fight to take Sean Porter's title hedged with Porter by KO. The outcome I'm eliminating might seem odd to many, especially given that Porter's unbeaten. Porter beat Devin Alexander by decision, right? Porter's never been stopped. Neither of these guys has been stopped. But the outcome I'm eliminating is Porter by decision. Let me make another point. Let's go back to Cal Brook's worst moment. Cal Brook against Carson Jones, the first fight. Let me say this. You know, Carson Jones is different than Sean Porter. Sean Porter is episodic, right? He's outside timing an entry point. Then he wants to jump in. He wants to get low. He wants to throw power punches. Right? So he's timing an entry point. Then he's getting low. He's throwing power punches. Carson Jones, by contrast, is a stalker. He's not episodic. He's slowly on his front foot trying to hunt you down. Now, the reason why that's effective against Cal Brook is hoverers actually, in my opinion, prefer you to be episodic, right? Because then when you jump in and they jump back and your attack doesn't hit pay dirt, they're able to throw a combination. They have you vulnerable. That's what Cal Brook wants. But when you hunt a Cal Brook down, understand there are holes in Cal Brook's game. Sean Porter has the advantage on the inside. Cal Brook is not a guy who knows his way around on the inside. Right? But to pull that off, you have to be so relentless with the stalking that eventually you take away Cal Brook's legs. I don't believe that's Sean Porter. I think Sean Porter has an element of surprise in his game that works well against jabbers like Alexander and Malinaji. Right? I don't believe it's going to work as well against Cal Brook. Let me add one more caveat. I know the people in public in boxing want you to believe that Kell Brook's only fans are in Sheffield, right? Countless fighters have said, I don't want to fight Kell Brook because nobody knows who Kell Brook is. Well, understand, the Carl Frotch George Groves telecast here in the United States netted 800,000 viewers. Understand, if Englishmen are going to cross the Atlantic to come to a fight, 
If that fight's in New York City, like this fight is, right, they're much more likely to make that trip. Right? It'd be different if the fight is on the West Coast and then you get to the U.S. and you still have six more hours of travel. Here, this fight's in New York City. New York, very savvy sports town. Right? New Yorkers seem to know what's going on in boxing around the world. So, don't be surprised if Kell Brook doesn't have an animated contingent with him in New York. Right? Kell Brook calls himself the special one. Right? Another nickname is Special K. A Kell Brook title shot has been a long time coming. I'm just here to tell you that there is right now a fault line that's about to break if Kell Brook takes the title. I cannot explain here to those who haven't followed what's happened with Amir Khan versus Kell Brook in the court of public opinion in the UK. But if you're from the UK, you know that fight would be huge. Let me also point out, too, that guys like Demarcus Corley have sparred with Kell Brook, right? Corley's fought and been in the ring with several guys, Matisse, uh, Miguel Cotto, many others, right? And guys like Demarcus Corley talk about the fact that Kell Brook is big for 147, right? I'm here to tell you he's also fast, Right? He has Mariano Rivera's problem. Mariano Rivera, the former reliever for the New York Yankees, would look like he was, you know, tossing easy pitches with his windup, right? His windup looks so effortless. But then the ball would come in at mid-95 miles an hour, right? It coming in the mid to high 90s. Kelbrook looks effortless. He's throwing bombs. I view this as his coming out party. I like Kell Brook to win this fight, hedged with Porter by KO. The bet's possible. Because Brook right now, inexplicably, in my eyes, is a two to one underdog. Right? So, I believe you would be able to get better than even money odds on both sides of the play. Speed kills. If Sean Porter can't handle Kell Brook's hand speed, and it's two-handed, right? And it's power, right? Sean Porter could find himself overwhelmed on the scorecards. Let me hear from you. I like Kell Brook to win, the underdog to win, hedged with Sean Porter by KO. How do you see it? I understand in the United States here, the pick's going to be controversial. That's understood. I'll concede. Sean Porter is better on the inside. I'll concede. Sean Porter has been on quite a run. Beat Diaz in the rematch. Was the underdog against Alexander. And, of course, beat Paulie, Molly, uh, Paulie Malinaji in a way we haven't seen Paulie Malinaji get beaten. I'll concede all of that. But he's not facing a jabber here. He's facing a hoverer. And I think the style change is going to give him problems. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.